Welcome to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosy UK. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can crochet your very own all meshed up market bag. This market bag uses the offset mesh stitch that I'm a huge fan of because it's really quick to work up. Um, so it's mainly made of um, US double crochets and chains before we add on a handle. So before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so that you never miss out on another one of my crochet tutorials again. Let's gather the materials that we need to make this super cute market bag. So I'm going to be using um, one Lion Brand Mandala Ombre and this is shade Tranquil, yes. Um, and on, alongside that, even though the recommended hook size I think is a five and a half, she says, yeah, so it recommends a five and a half millimeter. I'm going to be using a five millimeter crochet hook with this. It still has a lot of stretch in it, which is just what you need in a market bag. So you can get quite a lot, especially going to the yarn shop. Um, but the handle isn't quite as stretchy because you're using a slightly smaller stitch. So you're going to need a crochet hook, a five millimeter crochet hook and about 300 meters or 335 yards of Aran or worsted weight yarn in whatever color you want. To keep it easy, you can just grab one um, Lion Brand Mandala. You're also going to need, of course, unfortunately, something to weave your ends in with, a little darning needle and a pair of scissors. Now there is an optional, you may need a couple of stitch markers to help mark out where your handles are gonna go. You can always recount that if you want to as well. So the size of this bag, the base measures about 27 centimetres at the widest and the length from the base all the way up to the top without stretching is about 30 centimetres. It's not a tiny bag, but it's not huge either. Now, the handle length that I've created is about 50 centimetres, so it's just long enough to put. You can either have it over your arm or you can put it over your shoulder as well. So gather those materials, get your yarn, get your five millimeter crochet hook, and we are going to get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a slip knot just by wrapping and pulling that working yarn through a loop twiddly this where it's been in the middle I'm pulling from the middle of my yarn cake here so create your slip knot pop that onto your hook and tighten that on there and we're going to very simply start with a chain four so we yarn over the hook and bring our hook through the loop on our hook one two three and four so we're going to create a ring to work into by slip stitching into that first chain that we made. So one, two, three, we're going to slip stitch to the fourth chain just by inserting our hook through, we're going to yarn over, bring a loop up and straight through the loop on our hook. So that creates a lovely little ring there for us to work into. You can see you've almost got two holes there. You've got the hole where you slip stitched and then you've also got the big hole that we're going to work into. So once we've made our little crocheted ring to work into, we're going to start by chaining one, which does not count as a stitch. So the base of the bag is made using, in US terms, it's made using half double crochets. So we yarn over the hook Finding the middle of that ring, we're going to insert the hook into the middle. We're going to yarn over, bring a loop back through that ring. We've got three loops on our hook. We're going to simply yarn over and pull through all three loops. I'm going to do that for a total of eight times around working into the middle of this bag here. So we yarn over, insert the hook. Yarn over, bring our third loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. That's two. Three. Four. Five. 
size. Six. Seven. And then number eight. All worked into the middle of that ring there. And we're going to slip stitch to that first one that we made. So we find not the chain that we made, which you can see it's gone very tiny down there. We're going to insert our hook under the first stitch that we made. Insert our hook under both loops. We're going to yarn over and pull through that loop and straight through the loop on our hook. And that creates a lovely, neat ring of stitches for us to work into. So check your stitch count after each row on this one. So we've got one. So we've got where we've just slip stitch into. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that's exactly the number of stitches that we want on round one. Going into round two, we're going to increase into every stitch around, which means we're simply going to work two half double crochets into each stitch. So we begin round two by chaining one, and then just where we place that slip stitch, you see there's that tiny hole there, we're going to work two half double crochets. So we yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over, bring that loop up, yarn over, pull through all three. We're going to work into that same stitch again. So you can see where you've worked into. We're going to yarn over and insert the hook straight back into that same stitch. Yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over and pull through two. So you can see it's created a little bit of a bigger hole. Don't worry about that. Once you work the other rounds, it will be less apparent. So into each stitch, we're going to work two double crochets into each, sorry, two half double crochets into each stitch. So working into the next stitch, we're going to yarn over and work two half double crochets. And then again into the next stitch, work two half double crochets. And we're going to continue that into each stitch around. So once we've worked two half double crochets into each stitch, our stitch count will double from a beginning number of eight to a total number of 16 stitches. Just continue to work around placing two half double crochets into each stitch. Once you've reached that final one, you can tell it's the final one because there's your slip stitch from the previous round. You can see you've got a little bit of a hole where it's joined. And you've got your little slip stitch. Down there is your tiny little chain one right there. And this is the top of that first stitch that you made. So we're going to insert our hook into that stitch, catching both loops. And then we're going to pull through and straight through the loop on our hook. Of course, you should double check your stitch count. So we should have a total of 16. So we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and 16. Perfect. And that's round two. On round three, we're going to increase in every other stitch. So we're going to yarn over and chain one. And we're going to place one half double crochet into the first stitch. And then into the next stitch, we work two half double crochets. Oops, got to yarn over. So that's two into that stitch there. So you've got one, and then one and two. And we're going to repeat that the whole way round. 
to work one half double crochet into one stitch and then two half double crochets into the next stitch. So that is going to increase our stitch count again. So we work one into one stitch and then two into the next stitch. So at the end of this round, you should finish by placing two half double crochets into the last stitch around. So your stitch count is going to go from 16 to 24 because we're going to add an extra eight stitches on this round. So on my last stitch and I'm working two half double crochets into my last stitch and I have a total of 24 stitches at the end of row three and I just slip stitch to join ready for round four so we're going to chain one and then in round four we're going to work one, zinc, one half double crochet, one half double crochet, and then two half double crochets into the third one. So we yarn over, working that same stitch as the chain one. We've got one, two, and then into that third stitch, we're going to work two half double crochets. So we work one, Two, and then we work two half double crochets into that third stitch. And again, just like the previous row, we should we're going to continue to repeat this along. So we work one half double crochet, another one half double crochet, and then in that third stitch, we place two half double crochets. And again, you will end this round working a working two double. Sorry, two half double crochets into that last stitch around. So just continue to repeat that the whole way around, placing one half double crochet in two stitches and then two half double crochets into that third stitch along. So again, we're increasing in this round here and we should end with a stitch count of 32. I've lost count. Where are we? Oh, I didn't get an increase. So you can see you've got two in that stitch there. They're all into that same hole. So one, two, I need to increase in this one. So I've got my last three. So we're going to do one. Two, and then two half double crochets in that last stitch. Ignoring our slip stitch, our chain one, we're going to slip stitch to the top of that first half double crochet from the round. At the end of this round, you should have 32 half double crochets. Going into round five, we're going to chain one. And in this round, we're going to work in three stitches and then do our increase. So one, two, three, and then we work two half double crochets. So one, two, three, and then we work two half double crochets into the fourth stitch around. And we're going to repeat that the whole way round. So one, two, three, two half double crochets. And we will end 
again with two half double crochets in that last stitch. So just repeat that around. So working one half double crochet into three stitches. And then in that fourth stitch, you're going to place two half double crochets. Oops, I dropped one. If you lose your way, just go back to your last increase. So there was two in there. So one, two, I need to do my third one. And then I can place my increase. There we go. So repeat that all the way around. I'm going to meet you at the end of row five. We should have a total stitch count of 40 by the end of this round. So it's going up quick now. And I'll see you at the end. The end of row five with a total stitch count of 40. So into this last stitch of round five, we're just working two half double crochets to complete this round. And we, of course, ignore the slip stitch, ignore that chain one. We're going to slip stitch to the top of that first stitch to join round five. You should have a total of 40 stitches at the end of round five. Going into round six, you might have guessed the pattern by now but it will change, so just be aware of that. So in round six, we are going to crochet into one, two, three, and four before we place our increase. And just like those previous rounds before, we should end our row, or round, sorry, on an increase. So one, two, three, and four. And then we work two half double crochets into that fifth stitch. So for round six, just continue to work one, two, three, four, and then increase all the way round. You should end on a um, on an increased stitch. And of course, you will have a total of 48 stitches at the end of round six. And I'll meet you around there. So just hit pause and I'll see you in a second. So in that final stitch, I'm working two half double crochets. And at the end of round six, I should have a total of 48 stitches. I'm going to ignore slip stitch, chain one. I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that first half double crochet to join round six. So round five, uh, sorry, round seven is the last time we're going to use this stitch repeat. So this time we're going to work in one, two, three, four, and five stitches before we do our increase. So one, two, three, four, and five. Then we're going to increase. So that is the pattern for round seven. So just one, two, three, four, five, and then increase all the way round, and we will end on an increase here. So at the end of round seven, you will have a total of 56 stitches. And then for round eight, it's gonna be a slightly different pattern. So do round seven, hit pause, and I'll come back at the end of round seven, and we'll do round eight together. So at the end of round seven, we work our two half double crochets. And of course we slip stitch to the top of that first half double. Oops. And then at the end of round seven, you should have a total of 56 stitches. So what I'm just putting it down here so you can see what's happening with our increases. See how the edges look flat in between each of the increases. Well, to counteract that, from round eight, we're going to do the even numbered increases or the stitches that are even numbered between each increase slightly differently. And that will counteract this look, in this case, of a bit of an octagon. So we chain one and going into round eight, we, in theory, using the stitch pattern, we've got six stitches. But in this point, we're going to do one, two, three, then we're going to increase. And then we're going to do six and increase. So once you've done your chain one, 
you're going to work the first three stitches with one half double crochet. That's one, two, and three. And then we're going to place our increase stitch. So we're going to work two half double crochets into that next stitch. And from here, we're going to work six half double crochets and an increase all the way round. And at the last time that you do your increase, you should have three stitches remaining. So that would give you your six here between the increases. So with this, from here, we're going to do six stitches with one half double crochet. And then we are going to place two half double crochets into the next stitch. So we work those six stitches and then we place our increase. We're going to repeat that all the way round to the last three stitches. Well, the last four stitches. You'll place your last increase and then you will have three stitches remaining where you work one half double crochet into each stitch. So at the end of round eight, you should have a total of 64 stitches. I'm just going to double check I've done this right. And I haven't. Should have increased it. Let me double check. One, two, three, four, five, six. Should have increased there. All worth, worth double checking. So you continue round placing um, six half double crochets and then in that seventh stitch work your increase stitch and I'll meet you back at the end of the round. So you should have a total of um, yeah 64 stitches at the end of this round. So I'm just reaching the end of round seven and I've got my just on my last increase and I have three stitches remaining that I'm just going to place one half double crochet into each stitch. Oops. Of course we're going to end by slip stitching to the top of the first half double crochet of the round and that should have a stitch count of 56. So for, oh sorry, no, 64, sorry, wrong round. I looked at my long notes here. So going into round nine, we're going to work one half double crochet into the first seven stitches before we increase. So we chain one half double crochet into the first seven and then we increase and we just repeat that around. So at the end of round nine, you will have a total of 72 stitches. So repeat that around, work your first seven, then place your increase, and then I will see you at the end of row round nine. So at the end of round nine, we should be finishing with a uh, working two half double crochets into that last stitch to give us a stitch count of 72. It's going up quickly now, isn't it? You can see the base of the bag is beginning to get a bit rounder again, so that's good. Now going into round 10, we are going to do a chain one. We're then going to work into that first four stitches before we increase. Then we're going to work into eight before we increase all the way around and after your last increase you will have four stitches to work. So we work those first four stitches. One, two, three and four. Then we place our two half double crochets. One and two. And then from here, we're going to work eight half double crochets and then we place our double into that, the two half double crochets into the next stitch. Three and four, all the way up to number eight. 
then you're going to increase. Now we're going to repeat that all the way around. So after this increase, we're going to work a further eight half double crochets. Then we're going to increase all the way around. And then after, the, after your last increase, you'll have four stitches remaining. So for, uh, yep, repeat that all the way around for round 10. And this round is going to end with a total of 80 stitches. So I'll meet you at the end of round 10. So I've just reached my last increase on round 10. So I have four stitches remaining and I just need to work a half double crochet in each of those. And as always, I'm going to slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet from this round to join that round and I have a total stitch count now of 80. You see how big the wonderful base of this bag is getting. So round 11, nice and easy. We're going to chain one. We're going to work our first nine stitches with one half double crochet and then in the tenth stitch we're going to place our increase. And we're just going to repeat that around. So we work the first nine. So there's the first nine. Sorry, my arm was getting all twisted. Then in our tenth stitch, we work our two half double crochets. And we're just going to repeat that all the way round. And at the end of round 11, we are going to have a total stitch count of 88. So I'll meet you at the end of round 11. So for the last round of row 11, we should be placing two half double crochets into that last stitch around and then of course slip stitching to the top of the first half double crochet from the round. At the end of round 11 we should have a total stitch count of 88. Don't worry we're nearly at the end of all of this increasing I promise you we're nearly there. She says. So we're going into round 12. Um, this is an even number of increases. So we're going to chain one. We're going to work into those first five stitches. Number four and number five. Then we are going to place our increase by working two half double crochets into that same stitch. And then we're going to do 10 stitches before we increase. So at this end, we should end with five stitches unworked, sorry, five stitches unworked after our last increase. So continue to work once you've done your first five, you're then going to increase and then it's 10 before you increase. So work that round for round 12 and at the end of round 12 you should have a total of 96 stitches and I assure you we're nearly at the end of all of these increases. So at the end of round 12 you should have five stitches unworked after your last increase. Number four and number five. So at the end of round 12, we should have a total of 96 stitches. Slip stitch into that first stitch from the round to join. There we go. And we are nearly there with the increases. I promise I keep saying that. So at the end of round 12, as I said, you should have a total of 96 stitches. And going into round 13, we are going to chain one. 
we're going to work the first 11 stitches before we increase and we're just going to repeat that the whole way around and at the end of round 13 unlucky for some we are going to have 104 stitches so we're adding eight each time we increase and then that's nearly it i promise then we're ready to do the fun and super, super quick bit. So keep working around, placing your 11 half double crochets and then increasing for round 13 for a total of 104 stitches. And I'll meet you at the end of round 13. So at the end of round 13, we will be working two half double crochets into that final stitch. And we should have a total of 104 stitches remaining, not remaining, in the total of the round. So we're just going to slip stitch to join that round and chain one ready for round 14. So this is the last increase round, you'll be happy to know. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to work one half double crochet into that first stitch and the next five. So we're going to work six half double crochets. Oops. Two, three. We're going to work those first six half double crochets. Then we're going to increase. We're then going to work 12 half double crochets and then increase all the way around so that when we come back to the end, we're going to have six stitches unworked after that last increase. So go ahead and repeat, do six half double crochets and increase, 12 half double crochets and increase around. And then by the last increase, you will have six stitches unworked and you will have a stitch count of a total of 112 stitches. And that will give us the complete width we need for the base of this bag. So carry on and I'll meet you at the end of round 14. So at the end of round 14, I'm just working my last increase and I have six stitches left to work. So I'm just placing those last six half double crochets to the end of round 14. Goodness me. There we go. I'm then going to slip stitch to join as we have done for all the other rounds. Caught something. There we go. And we are finally going to start with the offset mesh to create the main section of this bag. So we're going to continue working in rounds and going into round 15, we're going to chain four. Oh, so remember you need to double check you've got 112 stitches before continuing on to this round. So for round 15, we're going to chain four. So one, two, three, and four. Now this chain four counts as one double crochet and a chain one. So it allows us to skip, we're not going to work in the same stitch as our chain and then we're going to skip one stitch and then we're going to place one double crochet or UK treble crochet into that next stitch. Just in case you're not sure of that stitch there, we'll do that one together as well. So after we've done our chain four, we're going to yarn over, skip one stitch, insert our stitch into the next Yarn over to bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then we're going to chain one. And it creates these little blocks. We're going to skip the next stitch. So we're not working into that one, we're working into this one, placing a double crochet and a chain one. Yarn over, skip the next stitch. Working into that next stitch there, we're going to place a double crochet and a chain one. Yarn over, skip that stitch, working into that one. So you can see how we're working in every other stitch and the chain one counts for that stitch that we're skipping. And we're just gonna repeat that the whole way around 
to the end of this round here, making sure we do a chain one in between each double crochet. So we're going to skip that stitch and working into the next. So do the double crochet, chain one, and skip that next stitch. We're going to repeat that, as I said, the whole way round. So continue that the whole way round for round 15, and I'll catch up with you at the end of this round. Remember that chain one, that's the important bit. Skip and work. So okay, we've repeated that the whole way round and you'll see that we end up in the stitch next to that. We're still going to do our chain one at the end of this round because that will give us an extra space. So to end the round, and this is the same for every single round, um, we're going to slip stitch into the third chain that we made. So at the beginning of the round we made a chain four, but we're going to count up the chains. So we've got one two and three and that leaves that fourth chain unworked to count for the stitch we've not worked into so making sure that you go into that third chain not the fourth grabbing both loops of the chain we're just going to slip stitch to join the round there we go and the best way to count these rounds is to count your chain spaces like this holes in the middle so you can see it creates a lovely block um, which is the beginning of our mesh so the end of round 15 you should have 57 chain spaces these spaces here so beginning into round 16 we're going to slip stitch into that fourth chain so that the next the beginning chain for our round make sure you go through the chain sorry um, the beginning round where we do our chain is in the middle, not above this one here. So just like we did for round 15, we're going to chain four. And that counts as our double crochet and our chain one. We're not working into the stitch here. We're now going to work by yarning over and placing our double crochet into that lovely big chain space. Followed by, of course, a nice little chain one. So it's going to be super quick because we're just working directly into that big chain space and remembering to do that chain one after the double crochet. And chain one. So repeat that all the way round. When you get back to the end of round 16, we are going to count up our chain one, two, three, slip stitch to join into that third chain and then to start the next round you are going to slip stitch into the fourth chain so that your beginning chain is not right above the last block so you're almost creating a stitch in the middle of that block but the slip stitch stops it from moving it around too much so you're going to repeat round 16 for well, for quite a lot. So for a total of 35 rounds. So if this is stitch, this is row number 15, you're going to do a total of 20 rounds of the offset mesh. So I'm going to leave you to continue making your offset mesh before we add on the final part, which of course is a little bit of a, a top section before we add on our handle. So make a total of 20 rounds, so 20 lots of square rounds all the way up and I'll meet you at the end of row 35. So I have just joined my very last round of the offset mesh. So I've just completed row 35. So I now have 20 rows of this beautiful mesh and I've got a little bit of yarn left. So we're going to do a few more rounds just to close in the top of the bag. Whenever you're working in a bag like this, it tends to feel like it's expanding out at the top. So I like to bring it back in to be a bit neater. So for round 36, the first thing we're going to do is to work into each stitch and to each chain space around. So once you've joined from round 35, we are going to 
slip stitch to join and then chain one. And we're going to change into half treble crochets, sorry, half double crochets again, working into the stitch that we just did our chain one, because a chain one does not count as a stitch in this pattern. We're going to place one half treble crochet into each stitch and into each chain space around. So we're going to repeat that the whole way around, so into each chain space and into each stitch. So making sure we're working into that space there. You can see you've got your V at the top there. You can work into your chain if you want to, but it's a little bit fiddly and I like things to be nice and easy. I'm just going to work placing one half, treble, half double crochet into each stitch and each chain space around. At the end of this round, which is round 36, you will have a total of um, 112 stitches. Oh dear, sorry. Getting all twiddly. So keep going around working one half double crochet into each stitch and into each chain space around. And I'll meet you at the end of round 36. Just working my last stitch into that last chain space. I'm going to slip stitch to the top of that first half double crochet. Oops, not getting too caught. There we go. I'm going to chain one ready for round 37. So for round 37, we're actually going to decrease the stitch count ever so slightly. Again, just to bring the top of that bag in ever so slightly. So we start by working into the first five, just placing first five stitches, placing a one, just placing one half double crochet into the first five stitches. Oops. It's number five. And then we're going to do a half double crochet two together. So this will actually reduce our stitch count by each time we do this, it will reduce our stitch count by one. So to do this stitch, we begin by yarning over, insert our hook into the first stitch, yarn over, bring a loop up. We're going to yarn over and just pull through two. We're then going to yarn over and insert our hook into the second stitch, yarn over, bring a fourth loop up, we're going to yarn over and pull through all four loops on our hook. That's how to do the half double crochet two together. We're then going to crochet, so the stitch pattern begins here. So we're going to um, half double crochet into the next six stitches. Three, four, five, and six and then over the next two stitches we're going to half double crochet two together so we yarn over insert the hook into the first stitch yarn over bring a loop up yarn over and just pull through two yarn over insert the hook yarn over to bring a fourth loop up yarn over and pull through all four loops on your hook Going to repeat that the whole way round so you half double crochet into the next six stitches and then half double crochet two together over the next two and that's going to reduce our stitch count quite a bit actually um so we're going to take us down from 112 all the way down to 98. so carry on and repeat those stitches all the way round and i'll meet you round at the end of round 37 and then we get to make our handle. So I'll catch up with you in a moment. So at the end of round 37, we should have a total of 98 half double crochets. And um, we're just going to slip stitch to join that round. I'm going to do a little chain one to secure that for now. Because what we're going to go and do now is we're going to start our handle for the bag. So this is where our stitch markers will come in a little bit more useful. So I'm going to recommend that firstly, we're going to place our first stitch marker in the eighth chain along, eight stitch, sorry. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then, of course, to match up 
to the other side. We're not just going to guesstimate it. It's all about stitch counts. We're going to count round to the 41st stitch as well. So that's number eight. Nice and easy to see. So I'm going to place another stitch marker in that stitch there. And that should, it looks like it's not in the middle, but if you were to hold them together, you'd have a few stitches either side because the handle is going to be eight stitches wide and we want them to match at the end. So once you've placed your stitch markers, you don't have to do that. You can count them at the end of the handle if you wanted to. So very simply for the handle, we're going to work... Um, eight half double crochets from here, including in the same stitch where we've got that chain one, because the chain one doesn't count as a stitch. So we insert the hook and pull through all three, and we just work towards that next, or the eight, up to eight stitches, or where we've placed that first stitch marker, whatever's the easiest for you, if you'd like to count or not. and then number eight so the handle is going to take as long as you need it to take it's going to be um 41 rows long okay so so that's row one we're going to chain one and turn and then working oh, Working back along the row, we're just going to work one half double crochet into each stitch across. So making sure that we have a stitch count of eight at the end of each row. So the chain one actually helps us to have a lovely neat edge so it's not wibbly wobbly. So we're going to do a total of 41. That will give you a handle length of about 50 centimetres. If you want to make it any longer or any shorter, just make sure that you're ending on an uneven numbered row. So 61, 101, depending on how long you want that to be. So carry on and repeat the handle. So placing eight stitches so chain one and then working into each stitch across making sure you've got eight stitches in each row and I will meet you at the end of making your handle and I'll show you how simple it is to join it without any seam showing from the outside so I'll see you in a moment so I just completed the last row on my handle just going to make sure that it's not twisted at all and that it's flat because we're going to join this now. Make sure that yarn's not twisted around the hook. I'm going to join this to where we placed that other stitch marker. So making sure that it's completely not twisted at all. Find my other stitch marker. And I am just going to insert my hook where my stitch marker is. And I'm simply going to slip stitch through both to join them. So this is a bit where it can get a little bit difficult or hard to understand because we don't want to leave a seam along this side. So I'm going to kind of flip it inside out. So that we're working on the inside of the bag and the inside of the handle. So do a chain one and that allows us to work through both sides. We're going to join the handle to the bag. So where that first stitch is, insert your hook through there and also where you slip stitched. And we're just going to slip stitch again bit of extra strength on there and work our way through all the stitches making sure we're going through both the handle and the bag to make sure that it's all connected and it's all super secure
and slip stitch across each of these eight stitches. It gives it a bit of a neater edge than having this on the outside of the bag as well. So once you've done your last one, if you like a chain one and pull, you can cut your yarn and pull through. And that creates, looks seamless from the outside. It's got a seam on the inside, but you won't notice it when you're using it. So all you need to do now is just weave in your ends. So we're gonna weave in this end and the more important one, this one in the middle. So this is the one I'm gonna show you how to do because this is gonna give your bag a little bit more security. So you can see where your stitches go around. So you can just weave in and under all of these stitches. And then when you give it a pull, it will close any hole you have at the bottom of your bag. Just keep weaving around until you're happy that that's extra secure and that your hole at the bottom is gone. And then you can simply snip that and then you get to wear your beautiful, beautiful bag. I really hope you've enjoyed this crochet tutorial. If you would like to get hold of the PDF, you can do. I'll pop a link in the description box for you. Don't forget to give this tutorial a thumbs up. And of course, give me a follow over on Instagram and tag me in your finished bag too. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back soon with another tutorial.